What do Minnie Mouse droids and pirates all have in common? We're eating with them today in Disneyland. and welcome back to another episode of the Worth It series, the series where we go to the most popular overhyped restaurants across theme parks and let you know if they are worth all of that hype. Today we are in Disneyland Park, the 1955 original, and we are going to be hitting three completely different dining experiences to let you know if they're worth your time when you're visiting the happiest place on earth. I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited. I hope you're hungry. There is so much deliciousness waiting for us, so let's get in there. First stop on today's eating tour of Disneyland. We are headed not too far, just down the end of Main Street, USA, quite early this morning. Got in the park right at opening. I'm not a rope drop girly in Florida, but man, does Disneyland hit different. Also, the time zone's in my favor. Gah. Y'all know I love Walt Disney World, but this is my favorite Disney park. It's just so special. It feels special here. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Anyway, we are headed to check in at the Plaza Inn right here at the tip top right side of Main Street. The Plaza Inn has been a Disneyland staple since 1965 and it's popular all the time because at lunch and dinner they've got their famous fried chicken, but it's especially popular at breakfast because here is where Minnie hosts her breakfast in the park. This is the only character meal inside a Disneyland park, either here or Disney California Adventure. The other character meals are at the resorts. So if you are not stopping by the resorts and you wanna dine with a character and you're in Disneyland, you gotta come here. Thus making it quite a tricky reservation to snag, but we did one for early in the morning on our last day in Disneyland. And this is gonna be a character buffet, again, hosted by Minnie Mouse, but what I love about it you have no idea who else is going to be here. When I came here with my family, it was like Minnie, Tigger, one of the mice from Cinderella, Max Goof. So it's kind of a smorgasbord and I'm excited to see who shows up today. Minnie's breakfast in the park is $46 for adults. I'm going to go ahead and get in line to check in, but where did Alan go? All right, we're all checked in. And one thing that's different than Walt Disney World is you're going to pay like first, so Minnie's right there. We're gonna go in and get our picture with Minnie and then you head in and pay with the cashier and then you're done. You go enjoy the buffet and you enjoy your meal with the characters. Seriously, where did he go? Is that him? What is he carrying? I, has he gone to get us a, a pre-breakfast snack? What you got there? Pre-breakfast snack. Is that the Waffle Monte Cristo? Yeah. <gasps> I wanted this so bad. Oh, wow. Is it amazing? Is it everything that I wanted it to be? <laughs> Y'all, yep. the, the Monte Cristo is a famous sandwich at Disneyland, specifically in the Blue Bayou. And it mm. is ham and cheese and it's fried, but now they're doing it in a waffle and it's got a, a, a sauce. There you go, take a dip. Oh, going straight in. Oh, yeah. Ham, turkey, melted cheese, fruit preserve, rosemary waffle. Where'd you get this? Royal Street Veranda. New Orleans Square. Only till 10 a.m. Whoa. Goes with the ever fabulous Minnie Mouse. She looks so cute in her little apron. Also, photo pass pictures with Minnie are included with the cost of your meal. So you can scan the QR code on the My Disney Experience app and the Disneyland app so that you can access those, which I think is a nice little perk of coming to this meal. How are you? Are you, you're Perla, right? You're Perla. I knew I knew it because you have the beautiful purple dress. Have you been sewing anything else recently? Yeah? Just lots of sewing. Cinderella always needs new gowns, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, hi, Perla! Oh my gosh! I gotta, I gotta give you a hug. It's so good to see you and hug you. 
Have you had a big, big day so far? Do you need some honey? Is there any on the buffet? I'll give you some, okay? I'll get some honey, and then you come back to this table, and we'll give you the honey. Yeah, we got you. <laughs> So much is happening so quickly. We haven't even sat down yet. We got this amazing table right here on Main Street. I can't think of any better way to start a day at Disneyland than sitting on Main Street, being able to people watch and see the castle and enjoy breakfast with Minnie Mouse. We got these buttons that are very cute. And we got hand stamps, which is important because the bathrooms are actually right outside so, so that they know you are dining here. Uh, we went ahead and paid, and so now the buffet is ours. Another difference between this restaurant and Disney World character dining is because you already paid, you're not gonna really have a server coming to you. There are cast members walking around if you need anything, but you're gonna even serve drinks, uh, which is a little bit different than a Disney World buffet. Taking a look at the offerings, you have a made to order omelet station. You've got a breakfast station here with uh, scrambled eggs, bacon, potatoes, biscuits, and gravy, kind of your classic items. On this third bay right here, you've got mini waffles and French toast, obviously gonna need those. You've also got Bananas Foster and Oatmeal. On these little outside stations, you've got cereal as well as beverages, your standards. You've got coffee, sodas, juices, teas. And then on the center station, you've got a yogurt bar, jello, fresh fruit, and assorted pastries. Are you? It's so good to see you. What have you been doing? Eating? Did you make any of that food? You did? You're the chef? Oh my gosh, does Donald supervise? No, absolutely not. <laughs> Pluto, how are you? Have you been a good boy? Of course. Is Mickey giving you lots of treats? He is? Oh my gosh. Have you snuck anything off the buffet? No? Do you need anything? Yeah, no, not a waffle. <laughs> Oh, I didn't say hi. Hello. That's so cute. Aw, thanks Pluto! Thank you, Pluto. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> Not gonna lie, it's a little hectic because we've been up at the buffet, characters have come by, but don't worry, if you miss them because you're up at the buffet, they will come by again. Cast members let us know, about a 90 minute experience to get everybody. Um, Alan, what did you get? I got two biscuits with some sawmill gravy, bacon, and the country scramble, which is scrambled eggs with what looks to be bacon, peppers, and cheese. Yum. I also got some country scramble, sausage, one biscuit and gravy, and how cute are these mini waffles? They're not Mickey waffles, they're mini waffles. And there's a banana foster sauce, or I also got some syrup. Looks pretty fluffy. I'm probably not the uh, biscuit and gravy expert, so Alan's review will probably be hold more weight than mine. But I think it's pretty good. The biscuit's nice and fluffy. There's big chunks of sausage in the gravy. I'm not mad about that. They're eggs with bacon, they're nothing super extraordinary. Oh, and the syrup. She's a monster. Pretty good. Pretty good breakfast sausage. Nothing exciting, but a solid classic. But now, it's time for the reason we're all here. Minnie Mouse and her waffles. I'm gonna get some of this in there. That is so sweet. You may have heard me say before that I don't like sickly sweet things. That's sickly sweet. That's a no for me, dog. It's just really, really sugary. You can't beat the perfection that is a Mickey waffle, or in this case, a mini waffle with regular syrup. I do think these are a different batter, though. Well, yeah. Have you? I'm great. Have you and Chip been causing all kinds of chaos? I, I like that about you. I also have been known to cause a little chaos, so I find you to be very inspirational. <laughs> Could we take a sec? You like my ears? Oh, thank you. I thought they'd be good for Minnie's breakfast. I need some with you on them, though. Yeah, I need those. Yeah, you're very handsome. <laughs> it's so good to see you. Have you been sewing? Yes, lots of things, lots of gowns. She's got a lot of balls to attend, doesn't she? You're a busy, you're a busy girl. Uh, could we take a picture? Would that be okay? All right, waffle science. I have deduced 
that they are using the golden malted waffle powder, but the waffle iron is different because they're thicker than a regular Mickey waffle. So the mini waffle iron they must have here is different. So they're almost like a pancake consistency in the middle. Listen, let's see what these are about. I, I trust Molly's review on the eggs. I trust her on the on the sausage, and of course the Mickey waffles. As a as a true pro. Susie, will you sign my card? You know what? It's like a seven out of ten, which is pretty darn good for Mrs. and Gravy, Southern style. It's sawmill gravy, so you are gonna get bits of sausage in there. It's super peppery, which is something that I really like. I think it needs a tad more salt. And then a little bit of cayenne to spice it up, but I can understand why they're using the gravy this way. It's approachable, it's tasty, and these biscuits are fluffy. They're more like cake than biscuits. I'll take it. I think you're just adorable. I think you're a lot of fun, which I appreciate. You know, you gotta liven up the hundred acre wood a little bit. Yeah, it would be less fun without you. Gotta get that energy up. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, even Eeyore, you know, you gotta bring him up a little bit. <laughs> How have you been this morning, Tigger? Did you eat anything? Yeah, you got some food. If you need anything else, you let us know. We'll grab it for you. <laughs> I'm so glad you could be here. It's been a minute. How have you been? <clears throat> been good? I mean, good. Have you got fished? Yeah, good food. I, so I went to Toontown and I saw and Goofy's uh, in, in your hideout where you were fishing with a steak for Bigfoot. And I saw I saw all of your drawings of Bigfoot and the alphabet soup and it was great. Yeah, it was it was really great. <laughs> Cause I love your movie. Yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, you're amazing. Big fan of Powerline around here. Yeah, he's the best. <laughs> well that was a fun time. A little chaotic. Little chaotic, little chaotic energy going on, but nine characters in one character meal is pretty nuts. That, I mean, yes, that's wild. Especially for a venue that I'm just looking at the plaza in here, it's not super big. There's almost always going to be a character close to you. Yeah. Um, which made getting our food at the start a little bit of like a tag team mission. Yeah. So. If you do, again, if you miss a character, they will come back to you. Just let a character attendant know. Um, but buffets, generally speaking, are harder to navigate than like a family style character meal. Um, I think the food's pretty good. It's a little bit more basic breakfast options compared to some of the buffets in Walt Disney World character meals. But it's basic breakfast done well, I think. I agree with that. You're just not gonna get the variety. Also, I really wanna point out that the space is really pretty. It keeps in line with the turn of the century Victorian theme. It's really nice. I specifically love the chandeliers that they had. It was, those are really, really gorgeous. I have to agree. I, lo I loved the ceilings and the glass work and it's a really pretty restaurant. And in my perfect recommendation for coming to the Plaza Inn, if you're interested, it's to do like a mid-morning breakfast. Um, I recommend getting here early, rope drop, knock out a bunch of rides, particularly those ones in Fantasyland that don't have Genie Plus, and then come for kind of a brunch time breakfast with a bunch of characters. And I, I enjoy the Plaza Inn. I think if you're into character dining, this is a really fun one. Made it to our second destination. No, not Disney's Hollywood Studios. This is Star Wars Galaxy's Edge here in Disneyland Park. And we are headed to Oga's Cantina. This cantina is so popular, we couldn't even get a reservation despite trying multiple times, but we were able to easily join the walk-up wait list and it quoted us 35 minutes. So now we're just waiting to get called back. And while we wait, I think we will peruse Batu to see if we see any near dwellers or interesting creatures. Okay, y'all, we're here in Galaxy's Edge with my friend, Taryn. She's right here. From uh, her handles Benchlandia, go follow her. And she just told me about this guide to the creatures of Batu. We do not have this in Galaxy's Edge East. And it's this little like activity booklet that's got all different challenges. And once you figure it out, you get little stamps and then you win a prize. I did not know this existed. So now obviously I'm on a mission to answer a bunch of these questions. And the first one I'm looking at is how many claws does a loth cat have? Oh, so many. I'm gonna say 16. Okay, there's another one in the creature stall. How many insects has the wart eaten? Like one, two. Oh, they're lighting up. One, two. Two. No, there's one I over there too. Three. three. So maybe three, two, yeah. Three, like I think three, yeah. 
Seven. Seven. And a very strange neck. Perfect. So we got that stamp and then the lot cat. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. We have completed a children's scavenger hunt, saw Ahsoka Tano, and have been called back for our time at Ogus Cantina. Now, Ogus Cantina here is very similar to the one on the East Coast. It is filled with a number of specialty beverages and eats, although the menu is a little bit different here. But you know what the same? The vibe. So let's go visit with Oga. Oga's Cantina features a variety of specialty cocktails, mocktails, beers, and wines. No, these are not made to order, so you cannot usually customize them. And while there is a lot of overlap between East and West Batu, there are a few beverages that are exclusive to the Disneyland Oga's. Those include the Coruscant Cooler, the Purple Glandis Juice, and a couple of the beers. The food menus, however, are completely different coast to coast at Oga's. And here in Disneyland, you've got things like spice worsher pods, which are seasoned edamame. You've got a couple of cheesy bread dishes, as well as an avocado mousse dish. One thing's the same, though. DJ Rex is spinning the best beats from the galaxy and beyond. I started off with the Coruscant Cooler, which is made with Maker's Mark bourbon, Marasaka Maraschino liqueur, Caprano, Antica sweet vermouth, cranberry juice, and lime juice. I was immediately worried that this was going to be too sweet for me, but while it was sweet, it also had a little bit of that bourbon bite to come through at the back end. This drink is a one and done for me. I think it's a really interesting spin on a spacey bourbon beverage, but if you like sweet drinks and you want to try bourbon, this might be something good for you to try. I picked up the White Wampa Ale, which is a Hefeweizen beer with banana and citrus flavors made from Ballast Point Brewing Company, which is a great brewery that actually has a restaurant you can go to in downtown Disney at Disneyland. This was always my favorite of the exclusive beers to Galaxy's Edge, and I'm really bummed they took it off the menu in Walt Disney World. It's crisp, it's fruity, it's weedy, it's really delicious, and it's a little more fun than just a classic ale, plus it's got a great name. Taryn grabbed the Sessed Seltzer, which is a tropical pineapple orange hard seltzer made from a California brewery called Garage Brewing, and she was kind enough to let me sip on it. It was actually very good. I love seltzer, but occasionally they can run too sweet or artificial for me. This one was light and bright. If you're looking for something crisp and fruity, this is a great choice. For the first of our eats, we picked up the Batu Wilds Bounty. This is pastrami infused with cheese, mustard seeds, spheres, pastrami, chervil, pickle ribbons, and pickle salt served with warm focaccia bread. This is pretty tasty. It is a balanced dish. The pastrami is well cooked. It, the pastrami infused whipped cheese, I think, threw me off upon reading it, but upon tasting it, I really liked it. It wasn't super salty. Paired with the pickle ribbons and the salt, there was a little bit of brightness to the dish as well. I just wish there was more pastrami. Of course, I'm not walking away from a menu that has a garlic cheese sauce. So this is the garlic cheese five blossom bread with spicy cheese sauce. This is a warm garlic Parmesan pretzel knot served with chili de arbol cheese sauce. And y'all, why isn't this in Walt Disney World? It is so delicious. It's a fun twist on a classic bar pretzel with beer cheese. This is the space version of that. A little bit of kick from that beer cheese sauce, really nicely cooked, warm, doughy pretzel. This is delicious, and I'm just mad that we don't have it. Okay, well, that was tasty. I do love a visit to Oga's Cantina, even though I have not visited very many times here on West Coast Batu. Yeah, I think it's interesting to me because there's so very many similarities between the East Coast and West Coast. I do enjoy that there are some unique offerings in the menu here on the West Coast, so specifically the food items that we were able to try. Um, they seem pretty simple, but still pretty tasty. I wish we had them on the East Coast. That'd be really nice. Yeah. But it's always nice to experience something new. I don't think that if you visit Walt Disney World regularly and have been to the one in Hollywood Studios a lot that you need to carve time out of your Disneyland trip to go to Oga's. Yeah. It's fun to go to Oga's whenever you can go, and I do wish that they had the food in Hollywood Studios, but it's nothing that special that you need to carve time out of your day for. That said, if you're a huge Star Wars fan and you don't go to Walt Disney World regularly and you are excited to visit Galaxy's Edge, then Oga's is a really cool part of the experience. I think that's the main draw. If you're a fan of Star Wars and all the Star Wars franchise, it's worth checking out. Otherwise, try some other unique offerings. Additionally, there is a 45 minute time limit in there. So if you have a reservation or you're able to join that walk-up wait list and explore a little bit, it's only 45 minutes of your day that you're carving out. So it's not a huge time sink like some of the other dining experiences are. We have one more spot to dine at, but we just happen to be here on the day that magic happens. My favorite parade I've ever seen in my whole life is returning. So we obviously have to see that before we dine at our final spot. Any guesses where we're going?
good parade. It's my favorite parade ever. And if I thought it was good during the day. Oh yeah. At dusk with the lights on the floats, like Pepito. Unexpected. Unexpected. Pepito. Oh, the, the eyes and Pepito were incredible. And then Moana's flow with the water cool. and like Mickey and the sorcerer hat was just... Anyway, what we're saying is it's a great show. It's an amazing Hall is super talented. If you are in Disneyland, you need to see that parade because it sure. is just, it'll put you right in the feels. 100%. Uh, but we got one more meal to eat and yeah. it is at, uh, it's inside my favorite ride. So let's go. You may have guessed it and we are headed to the Blue Bayou restaurant in New Orleans Square where yes, the restaurant is located in the first part of Pirates of the Caribbean when you are down on the bayou before the Jolly Roger lets you know a vast matey ahead be pirates and plundering. And while Blue Bayou does have a walk-up wait list that you can join, it's usually too full, so reservations are highly, highly recommended. The Blue Bayou opened up in 1967, the same day as Pirates of the Caribbean, the attraction, and it was largely in response to guests saying there's no fine dining locations in Disneyland. In fact, this was the first location in Disneyland that required you to have a reservation, and you had to make it once you were in the park on a walk-up reservation basis. It's also right next door to the original door for Club 33, the exclusive members-only club here that started at Disneyland. The Blue Bayou's menu is kind of Cajun-inspired because you are here in New Orleans Square, but they are known for one signature item, and that is the Monte Cristo sandwich. I have been lucky enough to enjoy the Blue Bayou a few times over the years coming to Disneyland, but the question today is, is the Blue Bayou worth the hassle of getting that reservation? Is it worth all the hype since the 60s? Well, you know we're headed in to find out. Walking into the Blue Bayou, you are immediately transported to somewhere else. It is always nighttime here, and you've got the twinkling from the fireflies, and you can hear the sounds of the swamp. If you look up, you can actually see part of the old Club 33 as well. That's what those that porch is, and it just is a very cool environment to have a meal in Disneyland. Now, the menu at the Blue Bayou is going to be different for lunch and dinner. At lunch is the only time you can get the famous Monte Cristo. However, for dinner, you're going to have the Blue Bayou spin on some Cajun Creole classics, from things like your starters for blackened shrimp and chicken gumbo, your entrees with deviled crab, crusted filet mignon, and Creole roasted chicken. They also have a limited selection of plant-based items, as well as a few desserts. You can also pick from a limited selection of cocktails, wines, and beers. But the coolest thing is the signature cocktail glass you can pick up from the Blue Bayou, which is a nice champagne-style glass. Because we had been eating quite a bit for our video today in Disneyland, we just picked up all four of the starters here at the Blue Bayou, starting with the chicken gumbo with tasso ham, andouille sausage, and peppers with steamed rice. This was pretty darn tasty. It's not the best gumbo I've ever had, but it did taste really great, seasoned well all the way through, a great texture. You were able to detect the ham and the andouille sausage. It had a little bit of spice on the back end, which is really, really nice. I just really liked this. This is a hearty stick to your ribs starter. Next up, the blackened shrimp, which is served atop a white bean cassoulet made with crispy corn, cilantro, and romesco sauce. This was my favorite of the starters we had. The shrimp were cooked to perfection. Really great flavor, big pieces of shrimp. You also had the crispy corn in the cassoulet, which was awesome texturally. I loved the addition of that. Everything was light and fresh, and it felt hearty, but not too heavy like most theme park foods. Next up, I had the rosemary and sea salt brioche with butter and the seasonal jam, which this season was strawberry. This was bread. It was a pretty tasty bread dish that we had. You could detect the rosemary and the salted bread was nice, but at its core, this is just the bread starter and the carb starter to your meal. I enjoyed having the butter and strawberry jam to go with it, but it wasn't anything to write home about. And lastly, the Brussels sprout and tasso salad, which is made with manchego cheese, house-made croutons, apple and tasso ham vinaigrette. I love salad, and this was a pretty darn tasty one with some very unique items, such as the tasso ham vinaigrette. I love that they used the Brussels sprouts in it as well to provide a little bit of texture and earthiness. I love the nuttiness that comes with manchego cheese. I could use a little more of that. And then you also have the crisp freshness of the apple. Overall, I thought this was a great salad, and I honestly wish it had been bigger with a protein on it, and I would have eaten this for my meal. <sighs> well, that was pretty darn tasty. I enjoy a trip into the Blue Bayou. Now, here's what I will say. I think the cost is not reflective necessarily of the food alone, especially here at Disneyland where the food is generally better than other theme park food. I think the high price point is for the obvious. It's akin to Cinderella's Royal Table or Be Our Guest. 
So you're paying just as much for the space that you're in as you are the food you're eating. It is cool to know that this is one of the oldest places you can go in Disneyland. It's been around since, again, 1967. And I would say that a trip to the Blue Bayou is a must-do at once for every big Disney fan, Disney history nerd. But I would tell you to go at lunch so you can get the Monte Cristo, which is worth every single dollar and bite. <laughs> Also, if the type of food interests you, if that gumbo sounded good or you want some shrimp, I will recommend Tiana's Palace, which is the new quick service restaurant right over here, which also has really cool theming in space. Um, I think that food is honestly just as good as what we just ate at the Blue Bayou, but it's going to be quicker and you're going to get it uh, for less cost. Well, that brings us to an end of our Worth It series Disneyland edition. Please let us know where we should do this next. Should we do more restaurants in this park? Should we go across the way to Disney California Adventure, Universal Hollywood, more in Disney World, Orlando? Let us know. In the meantime, friends, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and if you'd like to join with the man fam about the conversation in this or any of our other videos, please join us on Discord. Links for all that down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been so magical. Yeah. And very delicious. So much food. Do you want to know what I want to do now? Ride Pirates of the Caribbean. Obviously. Yeah. Yo, ho, yo, ho, a pirate's life.